Hi, Don Garbutt here. This is part 2A in my reactor series for Music Marketing TV. In part A, we'll build a test instrument, and in part B, we'll devise a router to control its parameters. Routers are very useful in reactor instruments. They enable you to patch various modulation sources to destinations. To begin with in this demonstration, I'm going to show you a basic instrument that I built to demonstrate the router. Down here, I've got a stacked macro. This stacked macro is the collection of envelope generators that I discussed in the previous tutorial. The outputs of the envelope generators are going to terminals. The choice of envelope generator is controlled by the list module, which I discussed in the previous tutorial. The outputs of the envelope generators are going into an object here called X router. This is simply a new macro that I created to house the objects in the router. Right click or control click to get your objects menu. Go to macro and select new two in two out. If you choose the two in two out, that gives you immediately two input and output ports on the macro. Label the macro. And remember with the stacked macro of envelope generators, we had four output ports. Simply begin to attach those to the input ports of your router macro. To attach three and four, remember to hold down the command key while attaching the cable to the object and it automatically creates a port. Now you've got four input terminals within the macro and you can assign the outputs to your targets. Before we do that though, we would go inside the macro and create the objects and output terminals, which will show up on the output edge here. We'll get back to the router in part B. But first I'm going to walk you through the rest of the instrument. The outputs of this router are going to be connected to the target devices. In this case, I've got a macro which houses my oscillators. Amplitude control of the oscillators is one of the things that we'll want to do with our envelope generators. As we construct the router, we'll be able to create these terminals that you see here. Those envelope generator outputs are connected to the amplitude controls of the oscillators within this macro. We can go inside and see that. You can see here are the input terminals bringing in the signal to control amplitude. This is typical with reactor oscillators where you have an amplitude control and often you'd have an envelope generator connected up directly. What we'll do is we'll have the outputs of the router connected and that'll enable the envelope generator to connect directly to control amplitude. With these simple oscillators, they come with an amplitude control input but I've chosen a couple of different types of oscillators here for three and four, and these don't have an amplitude control. So the simplest way to control the amplitude is to actually use a multiplier math object. The multiplier allows the incoming control to multiply the output audio level. It's a very simple process, a little bit like a voltage controlled amplifier. So here we have an input port coming in to multiply the output signal of the oscillator, and that sends the signal to the output of this macro. Both oscillators 3 and 4 have that methodology for volume control. So here you see the input control paths to control volume. To add a little more functionality of control over the oscillators, I've also added a formant control input and a pulse width control input for oscillators 3 and 4. Here you see the formant control route, and this is the pulse width control route. The outputs of this oscillator macro are going into a mixer. The mixer outputs are going into two filters, and filter cutoff point control is set up here. Housing the components in macros makes it very convenient to move them around as a block. So this is the mixer object with the individual mixer controls inside. I've set up this mixer so that the pan control can actually direct the signal to filter 1 or filter 2 according to the position. So this acts as a signal flow control for the oscillator to a particular filter of your choice. Those two outputs are here and they come into a macro which I've set up to house my filters. Inside here you've got two different filters with a pitch control here. So this is a MIDI note pitch control, which controls the cutoff point. And I've also got an input route for the audio signal and an input route for the control, which is going to come from our router. So these would be the control input terminals, enabling the router to send envelope control over cutoff point. Output terminals are here. Filter signal goes to a pan object. This might look fancy as a pan control module here, but all it is is a couple of knobs which I put in a macro so that I could move those knobs around as an object here. Otherwise, the knobs would be just kind of floating freely. The panning controls will enable the outputs of these filters to be directed towards the left or the right side. So that's why you see the signal going out here of the left side and the signal of the right side going down to this side here, which proceeds onto the output. So that's a basic rundown on the instrument construction. In part B, we'll talk about router construction, and we'll take a look at some different types of routers that you can build. I'll show you how to build a simple X router that has sources, destinations, and a range amount. And then we'll look at an XY router, which has the same source and destination. This is the X destination. This is the Y destination. 
with control in this manner. And then we'll learn how to build several, because you'll need lots of these things. That's it for now. I'll see you on the next episode.